Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim In the name of Allah the All Compassionate the All Merciful Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh As Halloween approaches parents like you might find themselves grappling with questions from their children and maybe yourselves about dressing up going trick or treating and other aspects of this event which is so widely celebrated in Canada Now it's important for us to understand our children's society induced desire to participate in these and other festivities that take place in Canada. They see their friends doing it and it's promoted all around them on TV, the internet, the stores and in their neighborhoods. But should we as Muslim parents encourage these activities or allow our children to partake in such events? Halloween celebrated on October 31st has ancient roots and has evolved over centuries into the modern holiday we know of today. Its origins are a combination of cultural and Christian influences. Now historians note that Halloween can be traced back to the Celtic festival of Samhain, celebrated in November to mark the end of the harvest season. And they believe that to be a time when the boundary between the living and the dead was blurred. with spirits being able to manipulate the living and interact with this world. Now, Christian influence reshaped it with Pope Gregory III, who died in 741 establishing All Saints Day and All Souls Day. And there's so the night before All, All Hallows became All Hallows Eve, eventually evolving into Halloween. Irish and Scottish immigrants in the 19th century brought these traditions to the United States and Canada. including the practice of carving jack-o-lanterns. Halloween gradually took on its modern form in the 20th century with the rise of trick-or-treating and even much more elaborate costumes that were then were there in the past. Now today, Halloween has become a bizarre blend of its historical pagan roots mixed with Christianity and contemporary festivities and is celebrated in various parts of the world. in varying degrees as a secular day of celebration emphasizing fun which includes dressing up in costumes going house to house collecting candy and other treats carving pumpkins and many other things a combination of ancient myth and superstition and commercial profit making elements so what is the islamic angle what do we as muslims believe or what should we believe and what should we follow and practice Well, first and foremost, let me say that it's crucial to recognize that children are naturally drawn to all the holidays celebrated around them, most notably Halloween for various reasons. Obviously, peer pressure plays a significant role. They want to fit in and have fun just like their other friends. They're bombarded by images of Halloween in the media, making it seem exciting and appealing. It's like the allure of Christmas, Valentine's Day and Easter where gifts, decorations and festivities capture the imagination of our boys and girls. Now an extremely important question arises. Is it forbidden, haram, or is it permissible, halal to celebrate Halloween? Are we allowed or are our children allowed to dress up and go trick or treating on Halloween and to partake in the other Halloween based activities? Well, from a purely jurisprudential from the fiqh perspective, we can't label it we can't label it as being outright haram unless it is done with the intention of embracing its pagan origins or its Christianity inspired aspects or engaging in activities associated with the occult and the like. Now, obviously taking part in Halloween dance parties, music parties or mixing with the opposite gender are all impermissible. And this may impact even some of you in the workplace where you work they may have halloween parties. We have to realize however that participating in many if not all of the events surrounding halloween they don't align with our islamic teachings which are rooted in reality far from superstitions and the occult. Embracing halloween also has the potential to open the door for our children to crave other festivals such as christmas. leaving us in a difficult position to say no having already allowed one secular celebration into our house so considering this fact and that at face value it may not be haram to partake in halloween 
We also recognize the statements of the Prophet and his family. May the blessings of Allah be upon all of them and the guidance of our senior scholars, the Maraja Taqlid, as they have told us it is an obligation to maintain and preserve our religious identity, especially when we live as minorities. Thus, it is mandatory on every parent to instill a sense of pride in their children of our Muslim identity and culture. Reflecting on Halloween in this light may make it haram to partake in this so-called celebration. Now, in this respect, rather than looking to non-Islamic events for a time of celebration, we really need to aim to make Islamic celebrations fun, engaging, and fulfilling for our children, providing them with better and more meaningful alternatives to enjoy their faith. By doing so, we can create an atmosphere and environment where they feel content and fulfilled in their Islamic practices, reducing the allure of external festivities such as Halloween. In conclusion, with all that I have said, what should you as a parent do? You as a mother, a father, a caregiver, what should you do? Well, obviously you are free to bring up your children as you wish. However, from the perspective of myself as a Muslim parent, a religious scholar, an educator, I would suggest the following three points to reflect upon. One is that we need to maintain our Muslim identity. From an extremely young age, we must emphasize to our children the importance of preserving and upholding our identity as Muslims. Halloween, with its historical ties to pagan rituals, irrational supernatural themes, and Christian influences, these conflict with the Quran and the established teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah bless him and his family and the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon all of them. Acknowledging this day even for the fun factor, candy and treats and so on and so forth, whether for ourselves at work or for our children, this goes against our theology, our aqidah, and our morals, our akhlaq. We would encourage you as a parent to consider whether Halloween is consistent with your desire to raise your children to be like Abul Fadl Abbas, peace be upon him, or like Z Lady Zainab bint Ali, peace be upon her. Do we not want our children to grow up in accordance with the pure teachings of Islam, making them strong believers and followers of the Quran, the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon all of them, and someday to be somebody to be in the service of Imam al-Mahdi, May Allah hasten his noble return. Number two, we have to provide educational alternatives. All throughout the year, but more so, I would say, during the holiday season of Canada, I would encourage you to focus on activities that foster a sense of belonging within the Muslim community, ensuring that we, as a collective, celebrate the important historical events of Islam and other joyous occasions. Such programs can either be held privately with like-minded parents or on a larger scale with your Asia community or the Islamic center that you frequent. Now, these events can be both educational and entertaining, edutainment, creating a positive environment for our children. And there are many things that can be done in such events, short speeches, permissible entertainment, food, treats, interactive games, and more to keep our children engaged and in that celebratory mood as they see the mainstream society around them also having in their own holidays. And point number three, last but not least, we have to have respect for differences. I have to remind you parents that Canada is a beautiful, multicultural, diverse society. As such, it is essential to respect the beliefs and practices of others, even if we don't accept or practice them ourselves. You need to explain to your children that while some people celebrate Halloween, and they may also be Muslims, that this day, just like other celebrations like Valentine's Day, Easter, Christmas, they don't align with our family values. We can use such days to teach our children the importance of respecting differences and being accepting of various cultures and faiths and their holidays and days of celebration while maintaining our identity as Shia Muslims living in Canada. In closing, may Allah the Grand and Majestic make it easier for all of us to bring up our children in the secular society of Canada. And may Allah allow us to help them to appreciate the diversity of views, all the while holding on to the two weighty things that will assist us in this world and the next, the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. May God's peace and blessings be upon all of them. 
Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.